Greetings and welcome to the latest installation of the Centurus Knowledge Series. Today, we're excited to present to you on the topic of six ways to publish and share Tableau dashboards. All right, agenda-wise, we'll do a couple quick introductions and then we'll get into the heart of the presentation on how to determine the best method for sharing your Tableau content. Our speaker will go through a demonstration of, I'd say, six plus different methods of sharing. We'll discuss the pros and cons of each method, and then stick around for a brief Centurus overview for those of you who may not be familiar with what we do here at Centurus. Uh, some great additional, almost always entirely free resources, and we'll get to the aforementioned Q&A. So by way of introduction, I'm pleased to be joined today by my esteemed colleague, Monica Van Loon, who brings more than 20 years of experience in IT and information services to her multifaceted role here at Centurus. She is a frequent contributor to both the Centurus Tableau blogs as well as the Tableau community forums. And she's also one of our Tableau trainers who teaches classes on Tableau desktop and Tableau servers. Monica's specialties include database design and data modeling for Tableau, Tableau with Salesforce, Business Analytics, SQL, as well as Oracle databases. My name is Mike Weinhauer. I'm a director here at Centurus um, among my roles as a consultant and a pre-sales engineer, et cetera. I also have the pleasure of hosting our Knowledge Series events. So before we get into the presentation, I hand it over to Monica. We always like to uh, learn a little bit about our audience. And with that, I have a poll for you today, as usual. The, t the question for today is, what Tableau tool do you use for development? Do you use desktop? Do you predominantly use server? Uh, Tableau public? Are you just getting started and using the two-week trial or none of the above? All right, we're at about 85%. I'm gonna go ahead and close and share this back. So not too surprising with Tableau since desktop is kind of the, the paradigm for it. 83%, um, I would expect that number to shift towards server more and more as the editing capabilities on server get better and better, but not too surprising there. Thank you for sharing your insights. And with that, I'm going to hand the microphone on the floor over to Monica. Monica, take it away. Thank you, Michael. And welcome everybody to Six Ways to Publish and Share Tableau. Uh, and actually, we're going to be discussing a few offshoots of that, so six plus, like Michael said. You know, I, I've taught Tableau Fundamentals to over 900 people over the last few years, and uh, it's a great class, half-day class, and they create a great dashboard at the end. But what invariably I get at the end of class is, now what? How do I share what I've built with my colleagues? And it sounds like it'd be something very straightforward, but there's just a lot of options in Tableau. And it really depends on the product you use to do your development. And you know, uh, there's a lot of different things to consider. So for this webinar, I, my goal is to show you the commonly used options for sharing Tableau. So just for a brief overview, because uh, we usually get some people that are new to Tableau. I'm going to do a brief um, overview of uh, the Tableau products we'll be talking about today. Tableau Desktop is the tool, the original tool that you download. And um, it's great for creating dashboards and ad hoc analysis as well. Um, and you can package your visualizations up for di distribution. Tableau Server and Tableau Online, I, I refer to them the same because Tableau Online is just the Tableau hosted version of Tableau Server. It allows you also to build and share visualizations. And you could publish interactive dashboards, but you also, it's much more than just a, a web development tool. You can secure and organize your content. You could collaborate. There's so many things to Tableau Server. You could check the performance, what dashboards are being hit the most, which ones maybe you should age out, all kinds of things that Tableau Server does beyond just creating dashboards and sharing them. And then there's Tableau Mobile, which is an app for mobile devices uh, that you could view Tableau content. And a lot of people aren't aware of the, of the Tableau free product. Tableau Reader's been out a long time. I keep wondering if they're going to discontinue it, but so far so good. And it's sort of like a Adobe Acrobat Reader, and it can be used to open and interact. You still have access to your filters and your parameters, but it um, you can't edit the dashboards. And it is um, 
only works with package Tableau workbooks in the format of TWBs and TWBXs, and I'll, I'll show you what that is in a little bit. Tableau Public is another free, uh, both a tool and a website for publishing Tableau uh, dashboards. And it also is a great option. Tableau Public is sort of like a, a Tableau desktop light. Um, it has a lot of the same options, but there's limited data sources and you can only save to Tableau Public um, website. So in summary, for developing Tableau, you pretty much have these three options, desktop, server, and public. And for viewing Tableau, you have all of those, plus you have Tableau Mobile and Tableau Redo. And for viewing you also, I included embedded Tableau, which really isn't a, a product per se, it's more of an infrastructure. Um, and we're gonna see a little bit about how that works as well. So for today's webinar, we're gonna demonstrate and discuss these six methods uh, for sharing Tableau. But each one, like I mentioned before, has some offshoots, like Tableau Server also has subscriptions and some things like that. So uh, I'm gonna talk about and show you how each of these work and how they're sort of interrelated. So how do you determine which is the best way to share your Tableau content, your dashboards, worksheets, uh, also known as visualizations, uh, you need to consider the device types used by your intended audience. Are they gonna be looking at a mobile device? Are they looking at an iPad? Uh, or they are on desktops? And can they install client-based software? I have a lot of customers that have sort of a standard image that they get on their laptops and they're not allowed to download um, you know, versions of the desktop versions of Tableau. They need to do everything browser-based. And does your audience need to edit or change your workbooks? Do they need to add columns or add a work, add a new worksheet? Uh, or do they just need to change filters or, and change parameters? And do you have access to Tableau Server? Tableau Server is a great thing. It's, it's um, really uh, a great option for sharing. But, you know, if you're a small little company, it does require a little bit of admin. Uh, overhead so that you do need somebody to sort of manage it and install it um, and so forth and what are your security requirements Tableau public is a great resource but if you're dealing with your proprietary corporate data you don't want to necessarily publish that to Tableau public usually and last but not least the Tableau license type what you have access to both from a viewer and a developer perspective depends on your Tableau license and I'll go through those at the end of this presentation um, in more detail. So the first one we're going to uh, demonstrate and share I'm going to just set the stage and talk about what I'm going to be demonstrating because it is a lot of a lot of moving parts. The first thing I'm going to be demonstrating is Tableau desktop. It's the original Tableau tool and it supports multiple methods of sharing. So some of those options in Tableau Desktop we'll be seeing today is save as a Tableau Desktop Package Workbook. A Tableau Desktop Package Workbook can only be opened by Tableau Reader and Tableau Desktop. You could publish to Tableau Public from Tableau Desktop. You could publish to Tableau Server or Tableau Online, and you also can create device-specific layouts. The nice thing about device-specific layouts is you can create one dashboard that has a layout for a phone and an iPad, and you share, publish your, your uh, workbook to Tableau Server, and you um, share that link. When they click on that link in their email or whatever, they will automatically pick up the right uh, device specific layout so you could develop one dashboard that can be viewed multiple devices and you also can of course publish the static files PDFs, PowerPoints and images using Tableau desktop so Tableau server Tableau online uh, used to be that Tableau server was mostly for publishing and managing and governing you know uh, uh, creating projects and groups of users and that type of thing uh, but their web authoring environment has really uh, ramped up in the last couple of years. And I'd say it's pretty close to being on par with Tableau Desktop. You could do almost everything. There's a few exceptions, um, and I'll, I'll show you where you could read a little bit more about that. But uh, it has a really good web development environment and also has that whole infrastructure to kind of manage and uh, do some data governance 
and security and essentially manage your data, your users and your workbooks. And Tableau Server supports multiple methods of sharing. You can create or edit your visualizations. You can still create a device-specific layout. It's really uh, not as good. That's the one, one of the downsides as Tableau Desktop is at creating device-specific layouts. Uh, you can create metrics, which is a new feature I'm going to talk about a little bit. Uh, subscriptions, which is like I want to get this, this weekly KPI report uh, every Monday at 10 a.m., that type of thing. And you could download a lot of different file formats, including PowerPoint and the workbook. But all of these options depend on how you've published it. So the people that don't have that checkbox marked for able to download cannot download the workbook. So I wanted to just give you a, just because this is a new uh, feature in Tableau, um, it's kind of a, it isn't, embedded inside your dashboards, but you could create a metric from your dashboards or your worksheets. Uh, the nice thing is this kind of thing, if you're going to create something like this in Tableau Desktop, it, it takes some work. I even wrote a blog on KPIs and big numbers, and it was something like 50 steps. So um, with the up and down arrows and so forth. So um, I think metrics are important for you to see what they are because it's two clicks and you could create these, but they are like a separate component. They show up really well on mobile and mobile has some extra options like adjust and compare. Over five years, what do I want to look at? So um, I wanted to just spend a minute on those and I'll show you a little bit of that uh, so you can see what they look like live. So Tableau Public is the other uh, you know, way to share Tableau content um, that we're going to be showing today. It's a free client-based development tool. Again, like it's sort of a Tableau Lite, Tableau Desktop Lite. It only has a few data sources, and it's also a Tableau-hosted website. And it can be used to publish and embed Tableau, and Tableau manages it. So it's, it's a free way to um, embed your Tableau workbooks. And uh, into your website, and I'll show you that because we we actually do that at Centurus. So Tableau Public, you could publish to Tableau Public within Desktop. You could use Tableau Public, the tool, to create a brand new visualization and save it to Tableau Public. You could embed it in a content Tableau Public content in a website. We do that, or you could use a permalink to embed a website inside Tableau Public, and that sounds confusing, but when I demonstrate it, you'll see it's a it's a pretty cool feature. So beyond those kind of basic ones, you also have options to embed Tableau in your own website, embed Tableau in some of these common third-party apps. No surprise that Salesforce is one of them uh, because uh, Tableau was acquired by Salesforce. So you could um, also embed, and that's a little bit of a more complex subject, probably could be a webinar uh, in and of itself. Uh, and there is some special embedded analytics pricing uh, offered by Tableau. And there's a, um, since this is a more of a developer uh, type option, I put in the um, embedding playbook, which is really useful. But I'll show you at a high level what it is today. So um, enough talking. Let's go ahead and get to our demo. So this is Tableau Desktop. For those of you who are brand new to Tableau, I think probably most of you already have Tableau Desktop. But um, this is one place that you could share from. So let's go in and go into this workbook. Uh, this is a sales KPI dashboard. Let's assume I want to share this dashboard with other people in my organization or out to the, the broader world. What are some of my options here? Well, the first thing I want to point out is I did create in this um, particular uh, dashboard, I created a couple of device-specific layouts. So here is the tablet version of it. So it fit into a, a screen that fits on a tablet, and here is the phone. And the nice thing is as I am uh, sharing this to server and I'm sharing that link on email, it will automatically pick those up. So one dashboard, three layouts. That's the first thing I want to point out. But let's say I want to kind of go to the traditional route where Tableau used to be shared. 
was the uh, package workbook. So these are something that you could create from here, save as and uh, export package workbook is really the same thing. The difference in the save as is it allows you to do a TWBX or a TWB. TWBX includes the data. In this case, it's sample superstore Excel spreadsheet. So that will bundle that all together and create a TWBX that you could then you know, email, put on SharePoint, that type of thing. The, uh, the other thing that I kind of like here is um, export as version. Uh, the reason that's nice is because Tableau desktop is not very good at being backwards compatible. So if you're running desktop and they really, uh, as you've probably realized, they really try to get you to upgrade every time you log in pretty much. <laughs> uh, so you're running a later version than your audience, uh, they weren't going to be able to open your workbook. So you could do this export as version, which is really nice. And usually I go for the least common denominator uh, version. Now. Uh, be aware that if you do have uh, version specific features in your dashboard, then they're not going to work in the lower versions. The other options you have here, or you could export as a PowerPoint. And what that does is it, it'll do this particular view, or I could uh, do all the views in this workbook, and that will create one PowerPoint slide per worksheet or dashboard. So um, that's just kind of saves you a little bit of time. I used to take screenshots or copy an image into a PowerPoint if I was doing an executive presentation or something. So that's that's kind of nice. And then uh, out of this file menu, you also have an option to print to PDF. So those are kind of the basic options. Now, remember, the TWBs and the TWBXs can only be opened by people with Tableau Reader or Tableau Desktop. So that's the basic options. but these days, most people are going to Tableau Server for publishing. So you click on the server, make sure you're logged in to your server, um, and then you could just say Publish Workbook. So when you get this Publish Workbook, you could pick your project. I'm going to put it in Monica stuff. I could pick a new name. I could you know, create a, a brand new name here and give it a description. Some of the other things I could do here is I could trigger a refresh. So um, I could say when I want this refresh. Now, we'll talk about refreshing, keeping your data fresh at the end as well. But just for a brief overview, if your data is local and you're publishing a Tableau server, it needs a way to get to your data. And that's something called Tableau Bridge. Here you could edit the sheets. A lot of times I just pick only dashboards uh, and the permissions that you can set them here or uh, change them once you get to server. But it's really nice to um, to go ahead and and look at the permissions and you could do a pretty granular um, Mike, let's deny him some things. <laughs> um, you could do some granular permissions. So the one thing that um, if you don't want people to to overwrite your your workbook, definitely deny this. If you don't want them to uh, edit it, if you don't want them to download it, all those things can be denied here before you publish. Okay, and then uh, data sources. So this particular workbook is just sample superstore, but if you did have a connection, a live connection to a database, it will ask you here, do you wish to embed the credentials? So your user who's viewing this workbook doesn't have to log into both Tableau server or wherever and your database separately. So you could do that. Um, and then there's a couple other options. Just give me a little warning here that the server is running an older version, but I happen to know it's just a point release difference, so it's fine. So let's go ahead and publish that. I've done that three at least three times. <laughs> So what this is doing is just packaging this up and putting it on our Tableau server. So it does allow you, once you get this to Tableau server, allows you to do device specific layouts here. I'll warn you when you do this in Tableau server, it pretty much takes everything on this screen, the map, the, the numbers, the, the line chart, and squishes it on, on a phone screen, which I don't like. So I usually create my own device specific layouts in Tableau Desktop that have the minimal data because you know on a small phone screen you don't want to have that much. It's just too much to look at. 
So it does allow you to do that, but I prefer to do that in Tableau Desktop. And also Desktop is uh, the only place you could edit device-specific layouts. So let's go ahead and look at this dashboard we just published to Tableau Server. And now we're going to kind of switch gears. There's more things you could do with it once it's over there on server. So over here, here's my dashboard. It looks uh, pretty much the same as it did in desktop. I have some options here on the server side. I could share it. And this is you could share it using the link, copy the link, uh, and then send this via email or or whatever. And you could copy the embed code. We'll see a little bit of that a little bit later. Um, you could also set up subscriptions. Now, this is a little bit of setup on your Tableau server side. Um, so, uh, but once you get that set up, uh, subscriptions are great. You could subscribe to particular users. I could subscribe Mike to this workbook or this dashboard. I could say I only want to do this particular uh, view, this dashboard instead of the entire workbook. I could say I want it to go out in an image. This is kind of that thumbnail that you get. And I could give it a subject and say, this is your weekly KPI dashboard. So I can send that to Michael. And then I could pick a schedule. Now, this is um, our particular Tableau s server is not set up for custom schedules, but sometimes they are. And if it's set up for custom schedules, then you as the person creating the subscriptions could be very specific and say, I want it to go out 10 a.m. on Tuesday, Thursday, something like that. But for now, we have some predefined schedules on our Tableau server, and that's Monday morning or weekday morning. So I'll just say Monday morning and say subscribe. I'm not going to do this because I've inundated Michael <laughs> with testing this, but I will show you what it looks like in the, in the using subscriptions, which is a, a, a great option. So here is the, um, the workbook from a subscription. You'll get an email from noreplyattableau.com, and here is that workbook. Uh, so it's pretty nice. gives you that little thumbnail. Uh, and then when you click on it, it's going to launch. Uh, it'll ask you to sign in if you're not already signed in. And then it will go ahead and show you that workbook. So that's um, that's a nice option, that subscription. So let's go back to where we were. Uh, so we did subscriptions. We did share. Let's also show you a little bit about metrics. So metrics would have been really nice if they put them in part of the show me and you could just drag and drop them onto the dashboard like you can in some of the other tools. But uh, unfortunately, they're kind of a separate component, but they are kind of nice. So I want to show you how you create them and, and what they give to you. So they only are allowed, you can only create them on certain types of data. Lines and bars are, are really um, the easiest. Um, so here I'm going to I'm on my very basic line chart. I'm going to click on the word metrics. So it says select a mark to create a metric. So I'm going to select this particular mark. So the nice thing is it creates this little sort of um, temperature gauge, this thumbnail, this KPI uh, little report. And it'll, um, I could say create. And I already created this one, so I'm going to overwrite it. And then I'm going to show you what it looks like. So the nice thing about these, uh, so it's really nice that it, it allows you to do this. This <laughs> is be really hard to do in Tableau Desktop. You know, you, uh, you could do a lot of it, but it takes some steps. That was two clicks. And it shows you, you can see the little arrows. Those little arrows, believe it or not, are not so easy to create in Tableau Desktop. Uh, so uh, the little arrows with the up and down period over period. So these are really kind of nice and they look even better on Tableau Mobile. So that's kind of nice uh, to have those metrics. And what I like to do with those once I have those, as I set them up on my home page, I set them up with a favorite. So um, if you star it, then it's going to show up, you know, front and center. Uh, those items that you have start on your Tableau server site. And then you could kind of, you know, you could make this look nice and say, these are all my regions, east, west, you know, central. And 
all those will have a nice metric right at top. And same thing, you could do something very similar on Tableau Mobile. So metrics are kind of nice. So that's kind of the options from Tableau Server. There's one more option I want to um, show you from Tableau uh, Desktop. And that is Tableau Public and what that does for you. So let's go ahead and uh, say save to Tableau Public. Unfortunately, it does not keep my login. So what this will do is it'll save this dashboard to Tableau Public. Tableau Public is hosted by Tableau. If you don't have a login to Tableau Pub Public, I highly recommend it. Um, at the end, I'll show you what it gives you, this gallery and all these workbooks that can be downloaded. And you, you kind of get the art of the possible. And you know, when you download these workbooks, you get custom shapes, all kinds of things. So uh, it's a really great resource for you. But when you publish to Tableau Public like this, uh, it'll ask you to edit details. So when you go here, there's some cool things you could do here. Uh, the one thing I like to do is this permalink. So this is the blog that inspired that dashboard. It was creating a big numbers KPI dashboard in Tableau. So I want this to be permanently linked to this dashboard that I posted on Tableau Public. And I also want to create a you know, a nice description and so forth. So that's, um, you could do all that in the edit details. And then you could specify here, do you want others to be able to download the workbook? That's fine and sample superstore data and copy this workbook and use it as an inspiration. So if you want to download this workbook, it's, it's up there on my profile on Tableau Public. And uh, from here, you could download, uh, you could download the image uh, and the workbook because I did specify that, or you could share it. So this share link here, you could use this email here, or you could just cut and paste this share link and then send it an email. So what does that look like in email? So that looks like this. So this is something that I, I shared with somebody with that, uh, that link. And the nice thing about it, you see here, it shows up with that little thumbnail, assuming your mail package doesn't strip out these little images, uh, shows up with that nice little description in, in the thumbnail. And then when they click on it, it launches it from Tableau Public, but because I set up that permalink in the background, in the background, it's going to have my Centaurus website. So this is kind of a cool little way to share what you did and kind of uh, anchor it to your own website. So now I could go in here as a person viewing it and uh, you could see the download the package workbook and share links are still there. But if I scroll up and close it, I am in that blog because of that permalink. So that's kind of a, a cool way to um, publish something. Tableau Public is maintained by Tableau. Sometimes it's a little slow <laughs> here and there, but um, but it's a uh, it's a good resource. So that is a little bit about embedding as well. So that showed you embedding Tableau Public and kind of linking it to your website. But there's other ways to embed um, Tableau. So let me show you what we do for some embedding. So on the Centaurus website under resources, we have this dashboard gallery. And when you go into this dashboard gallery, this was a, a bake off we did between pa Power BI, Tableau and Cognos for the same um, data, a similar dashboard. So for the Tableau version, if I click on view dashboard, it's going to launch this dashboard, which is hosted off of my profile on Tableau Public uh, right from within our website. So I didn't have to, you know, it wasn't on top of it. It's right embedded inside. So this is a little more, um, 
I'm not going to go into this because it's a it's a big subject <laughs> and it could be a webinar in and of itself. But there's all kinds of uh, uh, stuff uh, here that that you could see, and somewhere deep within there um, is the the URL that goes out and launches this dashboard off of Tableau Public. So that's how Tableau, and it doesn't have to be Tableau Public. So this same view source that I did could be launching it from your own Tableau server. Uh, but then uh, your audience would require some sort of a license or that embedded analytics uh, pricing to access it. So that was kind of a all-encompassing demo that showed all the different ways that you can uh, publish and share Tableau from all those three different tools. So just because it was a lot of information and a uh, kind of a back and forth kind of demo, I want to do a quick review of what we what we learned. So Tableau Desktop, you could export a package workbook that only can be opened in Tableau Reader, Tableau Desktop. You could publish to Tableau Public or Tableau Server. You could save to static files, PDF, PowerPoints, and images. But you do need to consider how to keep your data current. So I'm going to have a slide on that in a little bit. But um, that refresh uh, schedule, uh, normally uh, your data is going to, you're going to want to refresh your data. It's not a static thing. So Tableau Server, for the review for that, you can publish to Tableau Server, you can create from Tableau Server. You can uh, use Tableau Metrics to publish a KPI. You could use subscriptions to get it on a periodic basis. You could create device-specific layouts. Again, not quite as good as Tableau Desktop, but, but close. And you can download those static images, and you also need to consider how to refresh. Tableau Public, it's both a development tool and a website. Uh, that that Tableau hosted website I showed you. Uh, it's best for non-proprietary data. You see a lot, uh, the state of California has a, um, a, a, one of their, a lot of their COVID dashboards hosted from Tableau Public. So some of that uh, publicly consumable data. It's a great way to practice using Tableau. We've even used Tableau Public, the app, the tool that you download uh, for our fundamentals classes. So you could still get to sample Superstore and practice using Tableau. So it's, that's a great a resource because it does not require a license. So embedded Tableau. This um, image on the right is a, an example of embedding a Tableau dashboard into Salesforce. Uh, so there's some, a few more options on embedding other than just coding it from scratch uh, with some of these uh, common packaged apps. And there's, um, we've actually done a, a webinar on, on this as well. So I want to spend a minute on keeping data current because that's something that um, you need to consider. So if your data is local, and you want to refresh it, you're setting up that refresh schedule. Remember, Tableau Server needs to be able to get to that data. So you probably will need to install something like a Tableau Bridge client. And that was right there off that same men menu where I said, uh, save as Tableau Public, where you could get, get Tableau Bridge. You also can, from Tableau Desktop, refresh manually, manually and republish it, overwriting that same one, kind of like I did when I overwrote my original uh, dashboard. Or you could use a live connection to the database. If you did that, your data is always up to date, as, as up to date as your database is. So that's, that's a good option. But you also can publish the data source separately to Tableau Server and set up a refresh schedule. A lot of times, for performance reasons, people create their their data sources. They create uh, they create an extract, which is really good for performance. And when you create these extracts, they're static. They need to be refreshed. So you could do that in Tableau Server. Uh, and you also can create that data source and do all kinds of manipulation and transforming of it within a tool called Tableau Prep. That's sort of Tableau's ETL extract transformation and load tool that allows you to do all kinds of things, pivots and splits and renames and merges and stuff. And then it will, at the end of the day, create an extract 
um, it actually will create a database table as well, but um, an extract is the most common method. And those tableau prep flows can be scheduled using something called tableau prep conductor, uh, but that only comes with the extra license um, data management add-on. So that's just a brief overview of keeping data fresh. This could definitely be a webinar or a blog all by itself. So license types. So it really depends on what your audience has and what you have as a developer, what type of license you have. The creator license is the only one that has access to Tableau Desktop. You also have permission to use a license for Tableau Server automatically when you get a creator license, and you have a, a license for Tableau Prep. If you have Explorer, you could still create workbooks, but they have to be against existing data sources. You could edit workbooks, and you could do browser-based editing and viewing, and you could do a lot of those sharing options. Viewer is just the viewing uh, right from the browser. So that's just a, a brief overview of licensing in Tableau. And I created a little flow chart just in case, you know, you're confused on this because it is a little confusing. Um, if you have the creator license, you could either create your dashboards and share them via desktop or server. If Explorer can only do server and no license, you could still use Tableau Public. So just a brief overview of licensing. So in summary, there's a lot of things to consider uh, when you're sharing Tableau. Again, the device types, the, the license types, and so many, there's so many different options. And each one of these options are kind of, they're kind of interrelated and they have different offshoots as well. So hopefully you've seen just a little bit of everything to help you decide which is the best for your Tableau dashboard and your Tableau content for your company and for your audience, that your intended audience. There's there's a lot of options and um, it really is specific to the, for the application. So um, uh, based on all my uh, teaching of Tableau, the, especially the fundamentals class, anytime I got a question more than five or 10 times, um, I thought, well, that must be a confusing subject. I would create a blog on it. So um, one of the confusing things was the inspiration for this webinar, which is the blog on publish and share. Uh, I also did one on server versus desktop and Tableau metrics, what that is all about, and then the Tableau licensing. And there's lots more uh, resources on the Tableau site as well. Well. Uh, so thank you uh, for your time, and I'll turn this over back over to Michael. Yeah, thanks a lot, Monica. That's a great presentation. Um, stick around, folks, for the question and answer, which we'll get to in just a few minutes, and, and put your questions in via the question pane. Um, as you can see, there's a, a lot of different ways to share your Tableau content, and what we see kind of out in the, the quote-unquote wild is that people get Tableau and they start playing around with desktop and they're super excited about it and they throw up server. And it's very different from, you know, for those of you who are coming over from the Cognos side, um, it's very different from the sort of IT top down and it can lead to a bit of chaos. Um, and, and publishing dashboards to your enterprise that are run off Excel spreadsheets may not be the best approach. And there's a lot of different considerations. So that's kind of where, where we come into play. And, and folks like Monica, who have years of experience doing all this stuff, um, we can really help out with some of that stuff. So in terms of uh, just a couple quick slides about uh, about Centurus and what we do, and then we'll get to the Q&A. Um, first of all, we, we concentrate our expert uh, solely on business intelligence, providing a path to modern BI and accelerating self-service analytics for your enterprise. Um, we do that um, because our clients know us for providing clarity from the chaos of complex business requirements, disparate data sources and constantly moving regulatory and business targets. And we made a name for ourselves because of our strength at bridging the gap between IT and the business side. We deliver solutions that give you access to reliable analysis ready data across your organization so you can quickly and easily get answers at the point of impact in the form of the decisions you make and the actions you take. Our consultants are leading experts in the field of analytics with years of pragmatic real-world expertise and experience advancing the state of the art. 
We're so confident in our team and our methodology that we back our projects with a 100% money back guarantee that is unique in the industry. As you can see from the slide you're looking at here, we've been doing this for a while, um, uh, over 20 years at this point. We've been focused exclusively on business analytics uh, for the duration of that and have worked across the spectrum from the Fortune 500 down to the mid-market. You probably recognize most, if not all, of those logos there, solving business problems across virtually every industry and most functional areas, including things like the office of finance, sales and marketing, manufacturing, operations, HR, and IT. Our team is both large enough to meet all of your business analytics needs, yet small enough to provide personalized attention. Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, I'm going to point you over here again. This is a slightly different link to centurus.com slash centurus-resources. Uh, we encourage you to head over to uh, that section for hundreds of free resources from the aforementioned webinars like today's and uh, all the way over to our, our fabulous up to the minute, easily consumable blogs. Uh, along those lines, we always have some great upcoming events here. Uh, several on the horizon that are very exciting here. We've got a, finally a What's New in Cognos 11.2. We're doing that just a couple of weeks. Our webinars are generally on Thursdays, uh, 11 to, to 12 Pacific, 2 to 3 Eastern. So we're doing the What's New in Cognos. We're doing a Power BI Report Builder and Paginated Reports one in mid-May. And then we'll be talking about our Centaurus Analytics Connector, something near and dear to my heart as I'm the product manager for that that allows you to connect Power BI and Tableau to Cognos. We'll be doing a presentation and a demonstration on that um, the week after that. Um, and then finally, around training, I'd be remiss if we uh, left that out. We offer training on all the, the top three BI platforms that we focus on, Power BI, Microsoft, Tableau, and IBM Cognos Analytics. We are ideal for organizations that run multiples of these platforms or those that are considering moving from one to the other. We offer all the different modalities from tailored group sessions to small group mentoring to instructor-led online courses to self-paced e-learning and can mix and match that to meet whatever your organization's needs are. And then finally, uh, again, on our website, we have hundreds of free resources on the website and we've been committed to sharing those resources for over a decade. And so with that, we'll jump over to the questions here. Monica, I don't know if you had a chance to look at that, but the first one was, you know, what what version did metrics come out in? And I took the liberty of looking that up and it's uh it's it's relatively new, but it was came out in with version 2020.2. And then uh there's another question here that some some came in after I toggled over to uh to do the section on Centurus, but uh this person's asking how can you use Tableau prep effectively? Um without the data management additional cost. Any thoughts on that? Tableau Prep does not require the data management add-on. Only Tableau Prep Conductor requires the data management add-on. So you could still uh, go into Tableau Prep, create that flow, change that data, but you will have to run those flows to create that extract. So the only thing is the scheduling portion that requires a data management add-on. Tableau Prep comes free with Tableau Creator license. Yeah, thanks. And then, um, uh, let's see, that was more of a comment. Yeah, mine, mine is really small. I was trying to scroll through some Yeah, of the slide for Tableau sharing from a developer standpoint is helpful. Yeah. What about Tableau Online? Um, I think, uh, you know, Tableau Online really- Is Tableau it, Server. You treat it like Tableau Server. It behaves very much the same way. The dialogues are very much the same. The only difference is that you're not controlling the, the server itself, and it's upgraded and managed by Tableau on an AWS instance. So you have um, less fine-grained control, I'd say, you know, behind the scenes, but everything else is really the same. And then the other major thing I'd argue is, the, is that because that's uh, on AWS, it's outside your firewall, if you want to access data sources behind your firewall, then the Tableau online bridge, the Tableau bridge that Monica mentioned earlier, becomes um, more important because that's your your means through to, to kind of communicate through your firewall back to those on-premise data sources. Other than that, the experience is really uh, nearly identical. 
Yeah, and, and I don't know which slide they're referring referring to, for Tableau, uh, from a developer perspective. If it's this slide, you could add Tableau Server over here to this blue box that says Tableau Server, Tableau Online, same thing. So uh, the creator license comes with either or a license of Tableau Server or Tableau Online. An Explorer license comes only with Tableau Server, Tableau Online. So I'm, I wasn't sure which which slide they were referring to there. Uh, yeah. And the, and I did see one that's uh, probably beyond a little beyond the scope of, of this webinar, but they asked about embedding dashboards that are from your own Tableau server, and that's really something we can answer in a, a short uh, form like this. But that's what we used to do. So Centurus, those that dashboard gallery that you saw. Uh, used to be hosted from our own on-prem Tableau server, and we changed it over to Tableau Public. But so we have done that. Uh, feel free to give us a call. Uh, yeah, I would say reach out yeah. to us for that one because yeah, that's, that's that kind of we couldn't do justice to that, and it's more beyond the scope of this. Yeah. Where, um, what other ones was Tableau Prep? Uh, is is someone said Tableau Prep is available fully from the browser? And do you expect desktop to be fully available through the browser sometime? This uh, let me. Let me let me answer that. <laughs> so uh, I wrote a whole blog on this desktop versus server. Tableau Desktop is in the browser. So if you um, if you remember when I was over here, um, let's see where should we start? Uh, start here. This is if I do a create workbook. And I go to uh, a data source. This is Tableau Desktop in the browser. This is Tableau Server Web Authoring Mode, which is really Tableau Desktop in the browser. As you can see, it looks just like Tableau Server. It even has, I mean, excuse me, Tableau Desktop. It even has the Show Me button. That is everything you could do almost. The only couple little things that are left that you can't do within a browser that you can do in desktop, the only couple little things left are a little bit of the formatting options, a little bit of that, um, uh, what do you call it, device specific layouts. There's a few little tiny things that I notice that are missing. And um, uh, and again, I wrote a blog, it's one of the most popular blogs because a lot of people have that question. So uh, this is Tableau Desktop in the browser. And Tableau Prep has its own version. We had, we did a webinar on that as well some time back, but um, it is its own uh, entity in the browser. And I think it's not quite caught up to the desktop version, but it, it will be there. I think the whole industry in general, everything is, is going to be uh, browser-based. So that said, there's, I mean, there are, um, limitations to the, there's not complete parity between the desktop and the browser, but that gap is uh, is is narrowing it's all the time. It's pretty slim, yeah, pretty slim yeah. now, I would say. And I I try to keep that uh, blog up to date to talk about the differences. So, um, but there are some fine grained formatting things, um, a few uh, uh, you know formatting of your dashboards that that are not available and. Uh, in the browser, but most things are. Yeah, you can do a lot of it. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so with Explorer, there's a question of, um, can you, Tableau Desktop in the browser can be used with an Explorer license, is that correct? Yes, yep. you can use Tableau Desktop in the browser. The difference is, if you have the Explorer, a Tableau Server Administrator grants you a site role. And if you have the Explorer site role, you can create a Tableau workbook against a published data source. You just cannot create a brand new data source from scratch. That exactly. only is with the creator license. Okay. And you don't. You also can't. Uh, there's a question here about importing a workbook instead of publishing using desktop, and that is not a capability that exists. You have to. Publish from desktop. There isn't the ability to kind of go the other. The I other think way. they might have added something. Uh, I haven't seen anything. So if, yeah, if they have, yeah. it's, it's yeah. data or something like that. I would think they'd make a pretty big deal out of that. Um, so we're unaware of it. But yeah, they're changing it Up all the time. Uh, this is what I just saw. Oh, interesting. That's new. <laughs> 
He's made a liar out of me live on the on the, Sorry. On the presentation. <laughs> That's fine. So maybe you can. Um, it's, uh, yeah, yeah I haven't it. really played with that option uh, yet, uh, but um, but I just saw that uh, like yesterday. So a lot of times, Tableau, the, the, a lot of those new options are hidden behind menus and menus. So that's why we try to do webinars and blogs on some of the new features. But some of those slip, slip in there. It's a little dizzying. Um, is prep and browser available? Can you show us briefly is that if there is time? Um, there is prep is in the browser. Um, I'm not sure if we're prepared to, to no, I don't, show that, but yeah. it looks it looks just like prep desktop, right? You have your flows and your graphical representations and you add objects to it. So it's it's again very um, very akin to the experience you'd get in desktop. So um, and there's lots of information out there um, about it. And if you publish workbooks to act as a switchboard where you can exit a workbook into another work or dashboard, you have to publish the workbook for users to see, or can it be hidden so that they only access it through the menu in the workbook or dashboard? I, I, I definitely have to think about this question, but what I usually do when I um, publish my workbooks is this hide all sheets okay so um hide all the, the underlying worksheets so when i publish it they're only going to see that dashboard just like you saw when, not, when you saw me publish it to tableau server but i could hide those sheets and they're kind of sitting behind the other thing that i think that person should look into is the the new thing um the uh, fairly buttons exactly the buttons you could hide things behind a button there's sort of a gating capability there with buttons in tableau so um i think that would be something to worth uh researching for that person because it is a good good way to do that kind of gating hiding type of thing yeah i think there's some tricks to be able to do that yeah. um i definitely use the buttons when i build dashboards especially when you do um like you'll have a summary dashboard like the one monica's showing here and you want to let them drill through into um, a, a, a lower level of detail and and then so then use the button to bring you back to the main dashboard because otherwise you're kind of hitting your browser back button or, yeah you know, and there are button. and there are other ways to do that type of a thing as well that um, you know I, I'm not sure what the application was there but these dashboard actions are are really for that you could add an action to to reference another sheet to have like a, a summary just to start with and you click on it so there's there's a lot of different ways to do that depending on the application right so use the that was my point is use use yeah. the actions to drill down but the actions don't give you uh, an easy way to go back um, yeah so that's that's where the buttons come into play yeah, exactly so you, so you can navigate back but it's still I'd say something they could probably um, that requires some workarounds or that could use more enhancements. Yeah. Great. Well, I think that gets through all of our questions here. Thanks for all those great questions, everybody. Um, and so with that, uh, Monica, if you want to jump back to the deck and advance the last slide, mm -hmm. uh, first and foremost, I'd like to thank um, our presenter, Monica, for a great presentation today. And uh, thank the rest of, thank all of you for taking time out of your day to join us today. Um, please reach out to us if you have any business analytics needs. Uh, you can reach us at uh, via our website at info at centurus.com. Um, if you still actually use a phone, I think that's a dying breed. You've got a triple eight six zero one sixty ten number there, uh, and we'd love to hear from you. Um, so thank you again to, for spending time with us today. We look forward to seeing you on another knowledge series event in the near future. Thanks Thank a lot. You. Have a great rest of your day. Bye now. Thanks.